Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. And today I'll be going through my top 10 tips to improve your city in Kingdoms Reborn. All right, so number 10 is to change all of your mines to rapid mining. It'll increase your efficiency by 30%, which is always nice. Um, and it does cause your uh, mines to deplete faster. But like, for example, this province has 44,000 coal, right? By the time I burn through this, you need one, multiple mines probably. And two, by the time you burn through 44,000 coal, you're gonna be so rich and your city's gonna be so rich, you could just import it or I don't know, just find another place to put down your mine. Um, and so it really, really doesn't make sense to not have your mines on rapid mining at all times. Um, number nine is to never, never, never build fishing lodges. They're far and away the least efficient source of food. Like obviously this one's like a little weird because it's on a river and I just build it for example purposes. But um, even fully upgraded and at 170% efficiency, you're only getting 17 fish per batch, which is kind of just like basically nothing compared to something like this pig ranch which has 269 production per season which just shows how insane ranches can get um or something like this farm which is going to produce 213 wheat per season and also you're going to have these workers working on other things in the winter um it really doesn't ever make sense to produce fishing lodges at least put down like mushroom farms if you need food and you're not sure what to put um, they're just going to be more efficient than fishing lodges. Every single time I see someone build a fishing lodge, a little part of me dies. So for the good of my health, don't build these things. Number eight is, and if you've seen my logistics video, you'll know, markets, markets, markets. These buildings are great. So what markets do is they have these uh, super fast uh, carts that run around your city and they will bring goods that your citizens will need to the market. So this one has wood, it has coal, it has, you know, um, medicine and tools and everything that anyone living in and around the southern part of the city could need. And so anytime a citizen needs something and they leave their job and stop working to go get it, they'll go to the market instead of walking, you know, across your entire city to go get it. So especially as your city grows, you really want to have markets spaced out everywhere because it's going to make getting things from point A to point B significantly faster and more efficient. Number seven is actually a technology that I think people tend to miss um, when they're researching things, and that is building combo. So this tooltip is pretty bad, but what it does is every two, four, and eight buildings of the same type gives you a five, 10, or 15% bonus to that productivity across your entire empire. You don't have to do anything, just research this tech. Um, so clicking into something like a farm, and it does work with farms, which is also super powerful. You can see it has uh, combo level three, 15% bonus across every single one of your farms. Um, and this works for every building across your city. It's a very, very cheap and easy way to, to get a, a really good boost. This is a tech that I really, really like using. Um, number six is wood-fired bakeries. So bakeries by default are coal-fired, which I think is just incorrect. And it kind of just doesn't tell you. But if you swap these to wood-fired, you get 30% more productivity. Like, look at this. Coal-fired, 81 bread. Wood-fired, 100 bread. Um, and if you're doing my strategy, you put sustainability books in your bakeries anyway, you're really not going to be using much wood at all. Um, and so you pretty much always want to put all of your bakeries on wood-fired all the time. It's an easy bonus to your food production in your city. Number five is another logistics uh, piece of advice, and that is to build hauling services right next to all of your farms. So if you don't know, haulers, um, the people that work in the hauling uh, services, they, uh, they can carry five times the amount of goods as a normal person. So it makes the process of harvesting especially significantly, significantly faster and more efficient. So these haulers will go around, they'll just vacuum up all of like this weed and these tulips and everything and just bring it to where it needs to go. And they'll do it significantly faster, which allows your population to start working on other things and get ready for winter and stuff like that. Um, I like hauling services in general. I have them kind of spaced out everywhere. Um, but I especially like them, and this one's upgraded because I just have so many farms around here. I really like them around all of my farms. So definitely something worth researching and worth building. Number four is to buy iron tools and not stone tools. So the difference between iron tools and stone tools is that um, if I go to my trade here, 
So iron tools cost about three times as much as stone tools, but they also give your they also last three times as long. So you're not losing out by buying stone tools over like or buying iron tools over stone tools. They're just as like expensive as price towards like how much you get out of them. And also the advantage of stone or iron tools is that your people will spend less time, you know, they get low on tools or the tools are broken. They have to go all the way back to get new tools. That's lost productivity. Um, with iron tools, they're going to last a lot longer. So your people will work longer hours, which is always nice. So you always want to buy iron tools instead of stone tools. Obviously, there's times when you need stone tools, like here, where I'm producing stone tools because I haven't researched the iron tool like output yet. I'm actually working on a strategy where I just skip stone tools altogether and just buy iron tools until I get to production of iron tools. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out if that's optimal or not, but definitely if you're gonna buy something, buy iron tools, not stone tools. You're just gonna get more bang for your buck. Um, the one weird exception is if you're kind of in a death spiral where you're completely out of tools and all your people have terrible productivity because they're all out of tools, maybe buying stone tools is a little bit better because it's gonna spread out the tools more and then you can get like a jolt of productivity out of your city to hopefully kind of dig your way out of the hole you got yourself into. But um, by and large, you wanna buy iron tools. That also goes for uh, medicine as well. It's a similar concept with medicine um, being, you know, roughly double of what medicinal herbs are, but the, you get even more, uh, like they're more effective and they treat your people better. So you wanna be buying medicine instead of medicinal herbs. Um, though obviously early game, it you just really can't afford to buy tons and tons of medicine, so you're gonna need to produce medicinal herbs anyway. But if your people are sick, buy medicine, not medicinal herbs. Number three is a bit more of a conceptual tip. Um, basically in this game, death has no consequences. So below 65 or above 65 happiness, um, happy extra happiness isn't really that useful. And there's not really even a happiness problem with people dying, honestly. Like your other people don't get like sad or anything. And these immigration offices can bring in a person, if they're worked, they can bring in three people per season. So really, if you see like all of these people dying in the top corner, you see all like the sound effects, you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Obviously, like if there's a big problem, if your people are sick or cold, maybe fix it. But by and large, like having a rapid drop in population isn't necessarily a bad thing. The only thing you lose out is just their labor but you can easily replace them with immigration offices. So for example, this city has way too many laborers. This is just an example city that I put together to show these things. Um, and so if I lost like 30 people, 30 people died in the city, it's still gonna operate completely normal. It's not like the end of the world. It's not gonna hurt my city very much. So it's not the end of the world if you run out. Um, until obviously if you run out of like a ton of people, then, then you can't work things and stuff like that. Um, a good example of this is my deity no food challenge. Um, definitely check out those videos. It's kind of an interesting way of playing the game where you play the game without any sort of food whatsoever. And you just replace all your people as they die with immigration huts. I don't think late game it's like very efficient, but it's definitely kind of an interesting way to play the game. And it definitely shows that like currently as the game stands, death really doesn't have many consequences for your city as long as you just can replace your people. So something to keep in mind if you're having massive die offs, eh, it's not the end of the world. Um, number two is a very interesting sort of thing. I think there is a tendency for newer players, um, and myself included, to be like, oh, like this is a special province with coal. That means coal mines are going to be better than charcoal burners. But the actual case is that charcoal burners are much better than coal mines. You really shouldn't be using coal mines at all. So just to kind of compare, here's a charcoal burner. I have everything upgraded except for the, the brick upgrade. Um, and it has 210% efficiency. Now, some of that is from building combo, um, but it is going to produce 31 coal. And compare that to this coal mine, which does have rapid, rapid mining, but it's only producing 23 coal. And this is using four workers currently compared to two workers for charcoal burner. So this charcoal burner, you know, if you had four workers, right, two charcoal burners, you're actually producing 62 coal. So charcoal burners are just way, way more efficient. Yeah, they have a wood cost, but they're just so much more efficient that it really doesn't matter. Um, especially because you can build like, you'll build, be building more charcoal burners, right? Because they're smaller buildings. So this, in this uh, sort of city, I have four different charcoal burners up. And then I have another one being, oh, I have my fifth one up. 
So that's how you get, you know, your extra building combo. You also can upgrade Charcoal Burner Guild, which gives you another 20%, up to 30% as your city grows. And so charcoal burners are going to be significantly, significantly better than coal mines. There's also a tech that gives you 30%. Where'd it go? 30% productivity to charcoal burners, which is super, super good. So really, you can ignore coal mines for basically the whole game. Honestly, they're not super useful. I just built this one for example purposes. Um, the other final nice thing about charcoal burners is that, so for example, this charcoal burner is going to put coal here in this storage yard. These three charcoal burners are going to put uh, coal here. And then this charcoal burner up here is going to put coal probably here. Um, and what that does is it spreads out your coal production. And so since all of your houses will need coal in the winter, you want coal production spread throughout your city um, compared to like, let's say I was just using mines and I had a couple mines down south in my coal province. All of my uh, markets or people would need to walk all the way down to the bottom of my city to pick up wherever the coal is stored and then go all the way back to the houses. That's significantly less efficient. And especially in higher difficulties, you just can't afford to have your population not working that much. So I really don't like using coal mines ever. Replace them with charcoal burners and your city will be better. Finally, we get to my new favorite building, and that is granaries. Now, the beauty of granaries is that they don't require any population. A lot of buildings, and it's really easy to just kind of go through the tech tree and be like, oh, this is a cool building, this is a cool building, and build them. Um, but each of those costs population, and population obviously eat food, and they need upkeep and stuff like that. So anything you can do that increases the efficiency or makes your city better without costing population um, is something you really want to invest into. And my number one building for that is granaries. So it increases the food, any food production by 25%. It also affects uh, tulips and um, any sort of farming resource, which is also kind of nice. Um, and that's going to give you a huge advantage like across your city the second you get granaries. This tech will also give you um, up to 20% better efficiency farms so you combine that with the granary you're getting 45 percent more efficient farms and a nice bonus is that for example this farm is getting 25 percent bonus to its granary right um windmills don't get bonuses of granaries but then the uh flour is going to be put into this bakery that's going to get another 25 percent bonus of granary so like this is going to kind of give you like a very exponential sort of growth as you start building up your your bread production um, it's also just great everywhere and it also is a place for you to store food so you want granaries basically covering all of your food production if you can i'm building one down here just for these two sheep branches because even though it's only giving two um two buildings a bonus it's once you build it it's it's free you just leave it there right and it just gives a bonus to everything so granaries are in my opinion one of if not the best buildings in the game you want to get there very quickly in your tech tree. Typically I'll get like libraries and then just like straight to granaries. And it is super, super helpful. Build them everywhere, don't forget. Um, and I think that is all of my tips for you today. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any tips, definitely let me know in the comments. This game is definitely not a figured out game. There's a lot of things we're like constantly learning. So I love to hear what other people think. And um, I'll see you in another video. Thanks.